if a fucking computer is open and I walk by and I can see, I'm a look. But I'd rather be a snooty pooty than a thief. I'd rather not be a snooty pooty nor a thief. Meek streamed for the fourth time talking about me. Her streams about me ranged from 30 minutes to three hours. Hidden below the belt, being immature. I'm all about facts here. And since my last video confused some of you, I decided to break it down a little bit more. So let's start from the beginning. The other day we made a video uh, about Tina, me and Tamika and our women, you know, uh, which we were just giving an opinion just like other videos, you know, same shit. What would you do in this situation? What would you do in that situation? In this situation, I would do this, and in this situation, I would do that. Completely told the truth, just how I truly feel. Did not bash anyone. All right. See, that's how it was supposed to be. I mean, Tamika did say it in the beginning. Before we even get to this video, you know, I don't really want to focus on the, the, the characters. I want to focus on the situation, because I want to have a conversation down here in these comments. You talked about the characters and the players. I mean, before the video even began, in the title, you are talking about the characters, Queen Nyjah's sister, Tina and her nephews. And you also added the pictures of the characters. Base things on. And I feel like the gesture, however, might have been very positive. I think right. it's because of all the negative stuff that has been done. Right. It's like it overshadows anything that she's trying to do. Mm -hmm. Now. And then you said the names of the players throughout the video. On Queen, CJ was a big legend. Legend, keep his hair. You cut CJ hair. It's a legend, but don't, you know, don't do that for CJ. CJ can't. Legend got on the mm -hmm. M. Tina feel like Queen, not talking to her. Let me explain a little bit more why I consider this bullying. See, if you're gonna bully each other, do it one-on-one, -on -one, because that's what Clarence and Tina did. Instead of going that route, all four of you chose to speak against Tina. Tina is here defending herself from all of you. So Bash Cash. Oh, and uh, I guess Nick has a new name for me. Has come in, and if y'all don't know who Bash Cash is, uh, she has really been stalking me. Girl, she's been begging for attention. Go, ch go check out her channel, please. Begging for attention. I've been beefing with uh, royalty and, uh, excuse me, Nick and Jay. Jay, huh? How? What? What did she do to you? Neek, you were not with Jay Vibes when her and I were in communication. By the way, our communication was very limited. Jay Vibes got upset because I did not like her idea of her having her fans pay to text her. That's how it started. <laughs> Everybody wasn't confused, but for the most part, people was confused. Like, Bliss and Pris, which I know this was Bliss, she was like, I really hope this ain't real. And I said, uh, you can DM me for an explanation. <laughs> She didn't reply to my, my comment though. I looked, I even looked back, I'm like, did she reply to it? I, I don't even know. But I checked, as you can see, I got no reply. I thought we were still okay. She just came back from a night out, so she's been drinking. So as she's goofing around on live, one of her nipples popped out. I DM'd her right away and let her know because I didn't think she knew and was like, hey, just so you know, one of your nipples are showing in case you want to delete that. And that's when she got annoyed and she pretty much gave it to me. She's like, I'm a grown ass woman, blah, 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 blah. And that was the end. We didn't talk since then. She had a problem with me. So this is the part where I'm gonna break it down for you a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm beefing with Tamika. Okay, what did she do to you? She said, thank you for commenting everyone. You really thought I was gonna leak the messages. Well, how lame is that? I thought you had proof. Well, Easy from Easy and Natalie subliminally talked on me, bashing me all over Instagram on a live video. Here goes Tamika messaging me. Hey, Easy's talking about you. But I know that. <laughs> Why are you instigating shit? Why are you coming to me, talking to me about this? I didn't have an issue with Tamika. I actually liked her. She seemed like a cool person until that point. When I saw that message, I knew not to trust her. She gets too involved in things that she shouldn't be in. But I kept on the conversation and what y'all don't know about those DMs, she helped me with a certain something when I responded to Easy on a video. And I'm not going to say what it was because I did tell her in those messages that I was not gonna let anyone know this. She said she was cool with it. I have her support in making this video. Drop the video and then Easy goes on live again talking her shit. <laughs> All of a sudden, I see Tamika 
on Instagram Live and Easy joined the video. Kiss an ass! Bro, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do, bro? So! Oh my God. What up? <laughs> And you know what's so funny about that whole thing? I still didn't hold it against her. Do your thing, girl, do your thing. But after that conversation, she stopped talking to me in the DMs. And if she did, it was a couple words here and there. I knew the reason behind it. And I still didn't talk on it. I still did not talk on it on video. And when I was speaking on Queen Nija and Tina and Clarence, that whole drama, I followed the story from the very beginning. When she came out of left field, I did not know she was gonna come into the story. I definitely reacted to it. That's what I do, I'm a reaction channel. And you and I do not have a close relationship or bond to where I owe you some form of loyalty. But out of respect, I still DM'd you and let you know that I had to speak on the situation because you got involved. <laughs> you got involved in another family's problems on a personal level. She said she understood. And when I went live, all of a sudden it was a big problem and this is when she left this comment you guys can go ahead and pause the video and read all that but she left it on my video i'm a grown-ass woman this is my channel i don't know you on a personal level and i've never met you no way in hell do i need your permission so i told her in the comments she can go ahead and dm me she didn't so i dm'd her and she never responded i haven't heard from her in months but the second i went live and said i got something to show y'all she left a few comments on my live and then she hit me up in the dms a long 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 message explaining herself and why she was upset i mean we all know why you are messaging me now because if you really wanted to explain things you could have done that months ago the second i dm'd you what did any of us do to you for you to be so upset. Okay, Nick, so you know, we both know, but let's explain it to the viewers who are new to our channels. I'm a reaction channel. I react to videos. The same way you react to Queen Nyjah, Chris Sales, Clarence. The difference here is Queen and Clarence, they don't get butt hurt and talk on you subliminally. But when I react to you, you put me on two of your videos. Y'all see me there. Now what you're about to hear is my voice. It's actually from one of my reaction videos. If, if you, I believe Nick is 30 now. If you're at age 30 and you still don't have a place to call home, there's something wrong with that. I want to say something that, uh, you know, somebody made a statement. I'm going to say <laughs> something that somebody made a comment about uh, me, that when you're 30 years old, I got to say one more thing when you made the comment about being in your 30s and still not having a place to call home, which was bullying. At the time when I was homeless, you want to bring up, you shouldn't be 30 and not having a place to stay. How did you bully me? You was bullying me. People took that out of context. When I say home, it can mean a house, an apartment, a trailer, even a cardboard box. Doesn't matter the space. It's a place where you are surrounded with loved ones, where you are comfortable and you feel safe and secure. Stability. That's what I mean when I made my comment. At age 30, she's roaming from place to place to place, eviction to eviction to just moving out state to state. It's hard to be mentally stable when you, when you can't even find stability physically. That's what I meant by my comment. I just tried, I went on a live and tried to see if she wanted to go live and speak woman to woman on Instagram, but she ain't, she over there. I see you nigga respond three times. She don't want to talk. Oh, so that's how I reacted? Let's take a look. I, why would I do that to somebody? <laughs> it's me. I'm just, I'm talking to y'all. I'm talking to you, Royalties World. I see your ass, girl. You commented like three or four times. I see you. I see you, girl. I see you, girl. No need for the three comments. I saw you once. <laughs> what did you say? Join her live? Nah. I don't need to go over there. She can come over here if she wants to. She already came over here. She had to leave three comments to get my attention. I saw her. I saw her first comment. I was like, girl, I'm in the middle of, of something that I'm talking about. I am not going to 
stop in the middle of what I had to say to speak to you. Wait till I'm done. <laughs> After I was done saying what I needed to say on live because I was talking to my supporters, I did read that she said pull up. I guess she meant going on Instagram live. I did not know that. She did not make herself clear. She never came back on. But Neek, if you want to, we can definitely talk on Instagram live. But under a few conditions. You need to call me by my name during the live. Bliss. I don't want this to be an immature conversation. So hitting below the belt is unnecessary if it has nothing to do with the topic in hand. And when I talk, you listen and vice versa. That's the only way I'll go on live with you. So I started reacting to the video and it was terrible. It was boring. I just, she's been saying the same thing. Yesterday I gave you a comment on you making a good video and now I take that back. She complimented me three times in a row on how good I do my videos. Yet, the one video that I do on her, she doesn't like. Makes sense. She has genuinely acted like I have started some shit with her. It's crazy because I've never had a conversation with her. You said we haven't had a conversation yet. A few seconds later, you say this. You paid me for a goddamn promotion and I did what I was supposed to do. I took your money, I, I put out your product. So how else did we do that business deal? We had a conversation. I don't lie. I said it in my last video. See, what you new subscribers don't know, she reacted to one of my videos with me and my ex-wife in it. That's how we got in contact. We talked briefly, kept it professional. So now that's out of the way. Let's talk back on the video I posted last. What else you gotta say about it, Neek? It just screamed, honestly, I, I got bullied when I was younger and I feel like you're a bully, so I want to defend everyone that feel as though they were bullied in life because I'm not over the fact that I've been bullied. So you're saying I was a victim of bullying. Okay, then a few minutes later, why did you say this? You literally is speaking about someone bullying while defending a bully. Now, vicariously, maybe you're defending the bully because you're the bully. You are the bully, so you see where she coming from. Now this shit making sense. That's what you do. Or that's what you used to do. Which one is it? For three years, you have been talking about me. Three. Well, let's look that up. Let's go to my page and let's search Royalties World and see what videos I have. See, the last video I did on you was in 2020. And then the videos before that was months before and before that was months before. And you know what? From watching that video with you and your wife, you was bullying your wife. That's why y'all ass is not together. It's interesting because she only reacted to one of my videos. We were doing a challenge, and this is the part that she's speaking of. Uh -uh. Yeah, can't even play this game. She already walked out. Hey, oh, hell no. Baby, get your ass back over here. She's throwing out. I mean, you can't just be forcing niggas to eat boogers and, and lawn clippings and, 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 and throw up and farts and shit. I mean, come on. Ugh. See, she doesn't know my sense of humor and the way I'm playful with my partners. I'm playful like that with people I know. Let me give you an example. Let's ask one of my coworkers. Jasmine. Let me ask you a question. Oh, shit. Ooh, I need to ask you a question. Okay. I already asked you the question. Let me ask you a question. Oh shit, here we go. When I told you, <laughs> here we go, you're like, when I told you, I'm, rec I gotta pee. I gotta I'm pee. recording by the way. Wait a minute, hold on. Hurry your pee. ass up. Hurry up, hold on. Hurry, 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 hurry your ass up. Pee. I got time. <sighs> I'm still recording. <laughs> I'm recording myself, by the way. Okay. I'm not behind you, baby. I know. Oh, you want to be on camera? It's okay. If that's okay. Okay, you down? Okay, girl. Okay, she's okay. tall, y'all. If I stay sitting sitting down, they're gonna see her ass. So I had to like go like oh, this. Oh yeah, I'm like, I'm like totally tall. Yeah, they're probably gonna still see my ass. And then All right, over. so I have a question for you. What's up? The other day, when I told you, when I told you, girl, sit your ass down. Uh huh. How did you react? I laughed. And, and why did you laugh? Cause you're you. <laughs> see, exactly. That's me. Okay. While you're thinking that I bullied my ex-wife, your ex-girlfriend, Jay Vibes, she thought we were cute together. She actually thought I was a great girlfriend. And when she reacted to our vlog, she was still in a relationship with you. What is this? I don't know. I'm going to send a car to find out. And you, there you go. Sit your butt down, girl. <laughs> Sit your butt down. Open the car. Yeah. Oh, you're 
You different. <laughs> personal message damn that shit is sweet as fuck that is okay i gotta get off this clip because i can't i can't stop fucking crying like ah look at that that is so beautiful wow i know i can't even look at her face <laughs> because i'm crying it's pretty right she knows i have to think for elephants she told us, girl. And of course, we did not divorce because I bully my wife. I actually talked about this on one of my live videos and I explained what happened. Beautiful, beautiful wedding. But then when people got to drinking, they done fuck shit up. They done fuck shit up. Okay, when I say people, I'm talking about my family and her family. Yes, you guys, it, they went and they went crazy. They went crazy and they collided at our wedding. They physically fought. There was a brawl that happened at our wedding and it, had, it ended with the cops being called coming to our fucking wedding, y'all. Yes, at the wedding, y'all. My ex-wife defended her family, I defended mine, and it was just not going to work. We separated three months after the wedding. I respect my exes the same way they respect me. I'm cordial with all of them. I actually got in contact with one of my exes from six years ago. You can actually click onto that right there. And I talked to her for the first time in front of the camera, in front of all of you. Her and all my exes say good things about me because I respect them. Now, let's remind the viewers how you treat your ex after a breakup. You got into a car accident driving J Vibe's car, and this is what you said. I still have enough respect to not expose you for the fraud you really are. The only thing that's fraud, today I wrote a clip. And if I did it, I'm gonna tell you I did it. I don't give a fuck. You damn right I wrecked her car. She wrecked the car. We, the car that she got now is in both of our names. She just wrecked it up. I mean, come on, we can, we can go toe for toe. Yeah, I wrecked that trash ass car with them bald ass tires. About killed me. The damn car about killed me. Yeah, I wrecked that piece of shit twice. I think them, I think that wreck, them both of them wrecks was meant for her. She should have been on the car. Dang. But I took the, I took the hit for both of them. It's all good. Well, so my back fucked up now. What else y'all got? Tell that's me. about the only thing that's fraud from you. Ain't from me. From you. I can't believe. You felt like that. You felt like that. You feel like that. Mm. I would never wish that on any of my exes. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I'm a protector. So I would have been happy that it was me and not my ex. But I am glad to hear that you guys are now friends. J Vibes was a bigger person in the story because she chose to forgive you. And by all means, I'm all for forgiveness. I can take up for myself and all this. There was nothing for you to take up for. Like Tina says, they don't know who you are. <laughs> Tina don't know who you are. <laughs> like, so what you did this for, I'll never know. That is very unfortunate because I don't just help people that I know, I help strangers as well. I don't need to know someone on a personal level to protect them or defend them. You only at 955 views in eight hours and those are the views that came from my people. The 900 and something, the, uh, the, the 1K people that was in my life amongst your 30 people. All right, so as I'm filming this right now, that video is actually at 2,900. It's probably going to hit 3,000 soon. And honestly, I do want to say there is nothing wrong with Neek comparing her numbers to mine because that's business. She's a businesswoman and so am I. I actually went to college for it. So let's break down the numbers. Royalties World has around 160,000 subscribers. And as you can see here in the views, including the video that's about me, she did good with that one. But her average number 
if you look through all these videos, is around 4,000 views. Let me take out my calculator and let's find out the percentage. So if she averages 4,000 views, we divide that by 160,000 views, and then we multiply it by 100%, which means 2.5% of your subscribers watch you. So now let's look at my numbers. And if you're subscribed to my channel, you guys do know I no longer react as much as I used to. I'm starting to create my videos differently. So that's gonna take some time for people to catch on. So the last couple weeks haven't been so great. But let's look at the average view count on my channel. I have around 6,000 subscribers. It looks like it's going to be around 2,000 views. So that's 2,000 views divided by 6,000 subscribers. Multiple Multiply that by 100% and that comes out to be 33%. 33% of my subscribers watch me. I think I'm doing okay. But you keep bringing up easy for what? Cause she wanna be easy too. Somebody gotta say it. Damn, you wanna be easy so bad. You wanna be me so bad. You wanna be Tamika so bad. I mean, do I really need to address that? It's her ego, not mine. It's bag season. Like I said, I wish you would've did it in October. You just missed out on a coin. What coin are you speaking of? Because if you look at my analytics, I only make 100 to $200 a month. So I can probably pay my phone bill with that. Maybe even my Wi-Fi. It all depends. But let me tell you where I really make my money. And I'm a sterile processing technician for the operating room. I'm in surgical services, certified. And I'm also a traveler, which means I work in Trauma One hospitals throughout the country. This assignment that I'm on right now, I make $1,500 net after taxes every week. That's $6,000 a month. I don't need YouTube. <laughs> you, you, you keep talking about, and, and we keep throwing this word out lightly, this depression and anxiety thing, which is ain't, ain't nothing to play with. You're damn right it ain't nothing to play with. On my channel, I speak about mental health. I've always been honest about my depression and anxiety. I even have a playlist of my depression journey if you want to take a look. Oh, and remember that whole Easy and Natalie drama that I had? It was about mental health. And you use mental health for this bullshit? Now, there was a couple comments of people saying that, well, even if it's fake, at least they're giving awareness to mental health. How the fuck is this awareness? How is this awareness of mental health? They're using the term mental health to make you believe this story even more. That's a motherfucking problem. That's what I have an issue with. Because people like myself are actually going through some shit like that. Some real depression, some real anxiety. And not just people who, ha who are dealing with mental illnesses, but families that are around us also deal with it. But y'all gonna make this a fun situation, aren't you? You see my neck there? That's a sad angel with a broken wing. And I have doves there flying towards her to give her hope. And the semicolon represents suicide prevention. I have another one behind my ear, but you can't really see it. These two are symbols of the times I almost lost my life to depression. So no, it's not a joke to me neither. And understand y'all in these comments, I, I don't play about that depression shit. I really went through that. I was in that. And I haven't forgot anybody that has said something during my depression. I eat you. You're one of them. You, you got a battle with you. And I know what that's like. I was just in it. But when I was in it, you was kicking me while I was down. It sounded like you was a bully to me. Why are you continuing to lie to your viewers? That's not what happened. Because when you spoke up about your depression in that documentary, I was in my depression during that time. And just like you, I was suicidal. So I related. Now. Depression. I'm in this dark ass space and every time something happened, I start crying, bawling, bawling, crying, man. Like, it, I don't care what it was. Anything hurt my feelings. I couldn't hold nothing. My, my heart felt heavy. My chest felt heavy. And then she went ahead and talked about wanting to kill herself. But you got to respect those type of people. I mean, hell, even with Jayla, Jayla said, she said, you want to kill yourself? Honestly, I want to right now, too. So, fuck it, we can do it together. Thank you. Hey, okay. Do that, Sam. Hey, okay. I got you. Surround yourself.
yourself with good people. See, I loved your documentary. I liked that you were open to share and not keeping it in, which is why I reacted to it. And I also used it to educate. Now. I'm realizing, and the more she speaks, she dealing with something up here. So to correct you, Nick, no, I am currently not in depression. And it took me a long time to get out of it. Without the crying that I did, all that extra shit I did when I was depressed, without the crying, you look just like me in that fucking car. Her missus says, I can absolutely see how you have grown and are happier. Keep doing you, boo. We love you. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so proud of myself, man. It was a journey. It's crazy how such a short period of time um, that I can find happiness because I was depressed for four years and it was not going away until finally I left everything behind. I left my job of eight years. I left um, my house. I left my car and I just went off to the road to work in trauma one hospitals across the country. And I'm fucking happy. And that was only uh, four months ago, five months ago. Ah, oh, just feels fucking good, y'all. It feels so good. I feel like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I feel free. So shame on you for saying that I am when I'm not. If I was, I would be openly talking about it. But let's say that I was. Since you believe that I'm in depression, my response to your depression was different from your response to my depression. Let's take a look. It's given you have some personal issues that you need to take up with Dr. Phil, cause it ain't me. I have definitely uh, uh, pinched you a little bit. Just like Judea said, I'm praying for you, sis, sir. She said, I would never send my uh, supporters to bash her. I didn't send them to bash you. That's another thing you said. I sent them to tell you to drop the video. And beef cash is your beef and me making money off of it. Me making money off your beef. <laughs> Matter of fact, let's switch it up. Y'all send her the beef cash with prayer hands. Beef cash, prayer hands. And let her know you're praying for her because she need it. Let her know you're praying for her, y'all. Well, don't forget the beef and the cash, though. Beef, cash, prayer hands. And say, I'm praying for you. Beef, cash, prayer hands. See, if you truly believed that I was in depression, that's what you do. You become sarcastic, a smart ass, and you send your followers to go spam me with beef emojis and cash emojis, and then prayer hands, just to prove a point. Again, I would never do that to you. And my followers wouldn't either, because we don't do that. In her life, she just said, uh, I'm glad I'm a strong person because I don't feel anything. I actually did not say that. You can go look at my live. I said I don't feel any negative feelings, which is true. After all this that went down, I felt motivated, and this was the push I needed to be more creative with my videos. So no, it didn't give me negative feelings. It gave me positive feelings. That being said, this is the last video that I will be making on Neek on this whole situation. If something else comes out in the future, morally not okay or against my values, I will step up and speak again. If you wanna go on Instagram Live for us to talk, I'm down for it. If not, this is it for me. All right, you guys, tell me what you thought about this video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please hit that bell so you can get notified every time I upload. See you in the next video, peace.